So once you've navigated to the web page that has all of the resources in the digital toolkit, you'll notice that all of the tools are listed alphabetically. So this is a great way if you, there's a specific tool that you are looking to access or looking for more information on, you can just find it alphabetically. There's also a second way that you can access the tools in the digital toolkit. And that's by clicking on the resources um, button and you'll notice a drop down menu appears. And now you can see that the tools are also organized by what they do. So if you are not really sure what tool you want to use, but you do know that you want your students to be collaborating or you're looking for different tools that you, use, you can use to assess your students, you can click on any one of these options and you'll be taken to a page that'll show you all of the tools that can do that specific task. So again, if you're looking for different assessment tools, you can click on the assessment tools and then you'll be taken to different resources that will allow you to assess your students. So you can navigate these resources two different ways, either by the type of tool that they are or you can navigate them alphabetically. Kahoot is a really fun tool that can be used in all content areas. Um, and it's really fun because it's a great way to assess and quiz students or to even introduce new information in a really fun way. So what you can do with Kahoot is create um, quizzes and, and these you know interactive games and then students can respond in using either their phones or their laptops with the correct answer. After each round in Kahoot, um, it kind of gives you a tally of how students are scoring, so there's a little bit of competitiveness in there, which keeps students engaged. What's really nice about this tool is that accounts for teachers are free, and it doesn't actually require students to create accounts. They can join your games in class, so it makes it really fast. But the other great thing about this too is that at the end of a particular Kahoot game, student, our teachers can access an Excel spreadsheet which gives an overview of how everyone did, which is a really great uh, formative assessment tool for teachers to use to kind of assess how particular students are doing or which questions or which topics students are struggling with, with so they know what to reteach or what to review later on. Poll Everywhere is a really great assessment tool that can be used throughout your class. Um, teachers and students can create free accounts. What's cool about this though is that your students don't have to create an account in order to participate in a poll or to interact with this resource or an assessment that you can create. Um, student can be assessed on a variety of different things. You can do it as a bell ringer, throughout your lesson just to see how they're doing grasping the information as an exit ticket. The assessments can be open-ended, they can be multiple choice. So it's a really nice way of checking in with your students, seeing what they know, and kind of using it to guide your lesson or guide future review and things like that. Students can use their laptops or their phone in order to participate in a poll. Um, and again, it's nice because their responses are anonymous, so they don't have to feel bashful to be upfront and honest, but it's great because teachers can really get a sense on what students know and what the class knows and how to proceed from there. Kia is a tool that is meant for creating and distributing online assessments and activities. So Kia is a really fun tool because one, not only can you create online assessments which makes grading and taking and giving assessments a lot easier, but you can also create online games and activities for students to participate in, which really helps to increase the level of engagement and participation among students. The thing that's nice about this is that teachers can create their own assessments and games, or they can pull from a bank of thousands and thousands of other assessments and games that have already been created by teachers that teach the same things that they do. So it makes a teacher's life a lot easier. Also, what's really nice about it is you can create a quiz and then modify that quiz and differentiate it for students with varying needs or varying um, learning levels. So there's a lot that you can do to streamline and simplify the way you give assessments and activities in class. So Study Island is an, a resource that 
Um, I already know the science, math, and English teachers have been using and are aware of, but it's actually a tool that can be used in a lot of different content areas. Study Island is aligned with the um, PA course standards and also is Keystone aligned, which is really nice, but it provides teachers with a way to assess students, to provide remediation and support for students who are struggling in certain areas, to just provide general support in social studies, reading, math, writing, science, um, and it does it in a way that's meant to engage students and keep them interested while still reinforcing certain skills and concepts. Um, all Chichester High School students have Study Island accounts, so if you don't know how your students can log in, you can email uh, Kate or Mary Del Vecchio for that information. But this is a resource that can be used across a variety of different content areas. So Turnitin is a resource that we have a, a subscription for. So any teachers that are interested in using this tool in class can be set up with an account and then can create classes and invite their students to join those classes. It's a web-based service that serves a few different purposes. It's meant um, for the online submission of research papers and essays. It allows for online grading of those research papers and essays and also has an originality checker so you can check for plagiarism and things like that. It's a really great tool um, not only for teachers because it's nice that all of your students can submit their papers to one spot, you can grade them online, it's super easy, but it's also nice in teaching the writing process. You can show students where they've plagiarized or where they need to be careful of plagiarism. You can have students peer review one another's papers and give each other feedback. So there's a lot that can be done with the actual writing process in addition to just having students submit papers online. Animoto is a really great tool for changing up the way your students present information. Um, it's really easy to use, so even somebody that's never used it before or does not feel particularly com comfortable using these types of tools will have a really easy time using Animoto. Animoto allows students to incorporate text, graphics, audio, and video into a movie-like uh, presentation that makes their presentations really dynamic. But the cool thing about this tool is that it kind of works on a drag and drop interface. So students can, can just put in the elements they want to be there and then Animoto will actually jazz it up and add the animation and make it come together as a seamless movie. Animoto offers teachers free accounts and then each teacher can actually get up to 50 student accounts. So even though every student that you see will not have their own account, you can have a bank of 50 student accounts, which is really great. So you can assign it to students if they choose to use Animoto for a particular product, product or project. Audacity is a really cool tool and I like this tool because it's automatically on all student and teacher laptops. So there's no internet connection required, there's no logging in or signing in, everybody has access to it anywhere you have your school laptop. Audacity allows students and teachers to make recordings. You can record audio, edit that audio, and make it sound like a really polished professional finished product. This is a really great tool to use if you're giving your students some choices about how they can present information. Students can create um, audio recordings or podcasts. This is also a really nice tool for differentiating your instruction. If you have students that have um, visual impairments or having problems understanding the text, you can actually create recordings of information so students can listen to it um, if they're struggling with reading. EduBlogs is a great resource available for student blogging. In the past, uh, we've used KidBlogs, but they have actually changed their platform, and so now they are a pay service. But EduBlogs is a really great educational blogging resource that allows both teachers and students to blog, and the free um, accounts available are absolutely perfect to fit all of our needs. So EduBlogs allows teachers to blog as prompts and then students can reply. It also allows students to blog and then reply to one another. 
this is a really great tool that can be used in all content areas, not just in the English classes where I think we think um, the most writing happens. EduBlogs provides students for an opportunity to collaborate with one another, to respond to one another, but also to explain themselves and to get better with their writing and their thought process, which is really helpful on the Keystone exam. Glogster is a very cool tool um, that students and teachers can use for creating interactive digital posters. So no more do students have to get a piece of poster board and cut pictures and stuff out of magazines and present them to the class. They can actually create digital posters using Glogster. Glogster allows students and teachers to incorporate text and images and audio and video and links um, put together a poster and then share them electronically and present them to the class. So it's just a really dynamic way of doing posters in class. Um, if you are interested in having an account, you can email Kate and get set up with one. All of our students already have Glogster accounts ready to go um, and that they'll use the same accounts in all of their classes. So that's really nice. It makes login easy. But this is definitely a cool tool for teachers to use to deliver information to students or for students to use as an assessment or project tool. Photo Story 3 is a tool that is available on all teacher and student laptops, so it's really nice you can assign this and not have to worry about your students having internet access in order to work with this particular resource. Um, and it's a Microsoft tool, so it's pretty intuitive and pretty straightforward to use. It's a free program and it allows students to create presentations that um, are similar to videos or movies using photos and images. So it's really easy for them to create a presentation incorporating text and, and photos and just kind of makes um, their presentations a little bit more exciting than the standard PowerPoint presentation. So I like this tool because it's a really straightforward, easy tool to use, um, but makes a product that is a little bit more visually dynamic and engaging. Powtoon is a really fun tool to use in class and it's a really great way to engage the students that are perhaps struggling a little bit to get involved or to engage with the content. Um, this is actually in response to we no longer have accounts for Go Animate, but Powtoon is a really great alternative to that. The free accounts that can be created with Powtoon um, offer a lot so they're really good they work really well in the classroom and they still give students enough to work with in order to create some really cool animations but Powtoon is um, an online presentation tool that allows students or teachers to create um, animated videos so it's a really fun way for students to demonstrate their understanding um, without just giving like a standard presentation so they can demonstrate understanding through a video with animated characters and text and it's it's a really fun way to increase student engagement in class. Prezi is a presentation program that allows teachers and students to make uh, dynamic presentations um, that are all web-based. Teachers and students can create free accounts so that's really nice. Um, the only catch is that students do need to have an email address in order to create their free account. But what Prezi does is it takes the traditional presentation and makes it a little bit more dynamic. So instead of having your traditional presentation tools that just give you one slide and next slide, this is actually um, an open canvas that allows your presentation to move around, to become a little bit more dynamic. Um, and it's nice too because it forces students to do a little bit more than just copy and paste text onto a slide, or at least hopefully it does. So it's just a little bit more dynamic in the way it moves, in the way it looks, than, tr than the traditional presentation tools and software, but it still gives students an opportunity to demonstrate what they know. Storybird is a really fun tool for students to use in class. And again, it's something else that they can use to demonstrate their understanding. So Storybird is a visual storytelling resource that allows students to take stories, poems, speeches, any text that they've written and they can combine it with existing animation and existing illustrations in order to create a visual story. Um, the free accounts that are available through Storybird 
cover really everything that you need so teachers and students can both create free accounts um, but again it's a really great way for students to take anything that they've written um, at all and turn it into a visual story to make the presentation a little bit more dynamic and appealing. So Turnitin is a resource that we have a subscription for, so any teachers that are interested in using this tool in class can be set up with an account and then can create classes and invite their students to join those classes. It's a web-based service that serves a few different purposes. It's meant um, for the online submission of research papers and essays. It allows for online grading of those research papers and essays and also has an originality checker so you can check for plagiarism and things like that. It's a really great tool um, not only for teachers because it's nice that all of your students can submit their papers to one spot, you can grade them online, it's super easy, but it's also nice in teaching the writing process. You can show students where they've plagiarized or where they need to be careful of plagiarism. You can have students peer review one another's papers and give each other feedback. So there's a lot that can be done with the actual writing process in addition to just having students submit papers online. Edmodo, Edmodo, Edmodo. By now I think everybody knows that Edmodo is the learning management system that we use here at Chichester High School. And just as kind of a little refresher, it's free for teachers and students. So if you are a new teacher or if something happened and you need to create a new account, there is a specific code that teachers need in order to be part of the Chichester High School network. But it's a free resource for teachers and students, and it is a really great way of communicating and collaborating and distributing resources. So teachers are using this. Uh, for everything from posting announcements and notes and alerts to posting lesson resources, um, graphics and articles, assignments, quizzes, you name it, um, and Edmodo can probably do it or do something similar. So there's a, real, a lot of great uses for Edmodo. It can be used in all classes across all content areas, um, and it's really helpful in preparing students for the learning management systems that they'll see after they graduate in college. Office 365 is a new resource available in the 2015-2016 school year. And Office 365 um, is currently available to teachers and will uh, become available to students. But what it does is it allows you to use the programs of the Microsoft Office Suite, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, plus some additional resources on top of what we already know and already use and just makes them more dynamic. So you can take resources, you can share them with colleagues and students, you can co-author and work on um, Word documents and things like that at the same time. So it takes what we've already been doing in the Microsoft Office Suite and just making it more collaborative and more dynamic. Um, for this, you just use your Chichester email address and your network password in order to log in to Office 365. Padlet is the tool that used to be known as Wallwisher. Um, which has caused a little confusion, but it is a virtual wall that allows your students to interact with you, with one another, with the content. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, it's free for teachers to create accounts and then students can kind of jump in and join a wall and interact with it. So it's a good collaboration tool. Uh, maybe you have students all kind of use their, the, wall, the Padlet as a um, you know, virtual brainstorm. Maybe you use it as a bell ringer and then kind of open up all of their responses and use it to jumpstart a lesson or discussion. Maybe you use it for students to post what they've learned for the day as an exit ticket so you can assess, you know, how well they understand the new material. What's really cool about this tool is that teachers can moderate it so you can make it so that students can't see one another's and then you can make their peers' responses um, available and, and visible to one another. So there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate this tool into class. Symbaloo is a digital bookmarking resource. So for those of you that are wondering what exactly is digital bookmarking, it's basically the same idea as if you go to a website and you want to add it to your favorites or add it to your bookmarks on your web browser, you can actually do that 
but you can do it through Symbaloo and create these web mixes that are really dynamic and really visual and meant to be shared. So you can um, accumulate a whole variety of different websites and resources into a web mix, which is what they call this resource, and then share it out with colleagues or students. So for example, if you have certain websites that you use routinely in your class, you can use this digital bookmarking resource to create a web mix and then share it with your students. Or maybe there's resources that are used um, repeatedly in certain content areas. You can create a departmental web mix and share it out with your colleagues. Or if you have students researching for a research project or research paper or researching a particular topic, they can create a web mix as they're finding resources and as they're researching, maybe it's an ongoing thing through a marking period or a semester, and save all of these resources in one spot. So it's a really cool tool for keeping all of your web resources organized. Today's Meet is a program that facilitates back channel conversation. So what exactly is a back channel? So the back channel is the conversation that's happening while a primary activity is going on. So for example, if you're in a professional development session, there might be a back channel set up to hear your thoughts or to take questions. Um, so it's, it's like kind of a, an interesting way to make a presentation or a lesson or a lecture a little bit more engaging and dynamic. This is a free resource and teachers can create um, a back channel and moderate it and oversee it but allow their students to have access so while they're lecturing students can ask questions they can interact with one another but the teacher can moderate it to make sure that all of the conversation is appropriate but it's a really nice way to start fostering some academic conversation um, and academic discourse among students and to you know kind of help to support what's going on in your class or in a lesson or in a presentation I know in the past a lot of you have been unimpressed with Discovery Education, but in the last few years, Discovery Education has taken a lot of measures to try to make the resources available to teachers a lot better. Um, so just to kind of backtrack for a second, Discovery Education is available to all teachers and students, um, so everybody has accounts. If you need information about that, you can reach out to Kate. Um, but again, Discovery Education offers kind of a little bit of everything and really allows teachers to build whole lessons in Discovery Education if they want. You can create classes, you can um, direct resources directly to your students when they log in, there's videos available, articles available, but again, it provides teachers with a lot of really useful uh, resources and tools. There's videos, there's articles, there's um, writing prompts th that you can implement. There are pa There's a page builder tool, which is kind of like Glogster. So there's a lot of resources and tools and things available in Discovery Education to kind of help bolster the um, technology happening in your lesson. Depending on who you ask, this resource is either New ZLA or New Zella. But regardless of how you pronounce it, this resource is really great for providing leveled articles in a variety of different content areas. So teachers can create free accounts and then find current, ev current event and nonfiction articles um, for their students to read in a variety of content areas spanning all across uh, the board. What's nice about this though is that the text can actually be leveled depending on where the student's ability lies. So if the text as it is is too difficult for a student to read, it can be leveled to make it a little bit easier for the student to comprehend the content in the article. So it's a really fun way for students to learn and read about different content areas through current events at a level that's appropriate for them. Atomic Learning is a tool that can be used in all classes in all content areas. Atomic Learning makes it easier for us to integrate technology into our classes. Every student and teacher has a login for Atomic Learning. You actually can just log in using the same login you use um, for your computer. So it's your network ID and your password. So the same way you log into your laptop each day. 
Atomic Learning is really fantastic because it provides users with online training tutorials for some of the most widely used products. So for example, if you have students that are struggling to use Glogster, instead of you having to take class time to show them how to use Glogster, you can direct them to Atomic Learning and they can teach themselves. So it's a really great way to learn new programs, um, and get a better understanding of programs without having to take a ton of class time to go over that with students. Common Sense Media is a tool that you may not find yourself using very often, but it's a really cool tool and it's good to know that it's there. So Common Sense Media offers free accounts for teachers and students wouldn't need accounts for this resource. Common Sense Media is basically all things educational technology. So it offers teachers information about um, new resources or best practices for integrating technology into your classes. It also has some tools where you can kind of help pinpoint exactly a resource that you might be looking for. If there's something you want to do in class but you're not sure, sure what tool to use, this has a, like a tool evaluator on it. But what it also has, it has digital citizenship lessons. So even though you may teach English or science, you may find yourself needing to talk about reliable sources or you know best practices in using your laptops or maybe your students need to leave a little refresher on responsible use of their laptops or responsible use of the internet common sense media provides information articles and lessons so it's got a lot of really great information about integrating technology into your classes Edudemic is a tool that all of the tech nerds can definitely embrace, but I hope that everybody checks it out. Um, it's a resource that really is more informative. It provides articles and resources and information about technology integration, um, best practices for technology integration. It used to strictly be geared towards teachers, but now it's also being geared towards students. So it's just a lot of useful information about educational technology. There's tips, there's guides on using specific resources, there's a lot of like how-tos on there and best practices for using different tools. So it's really nice if you love integrating technology in your classes and you want to learn more or if this is an area that you struggle in and you're looking to kind of get yourself started and get a little more information, Edudemic is a great place to check for articles and resources. iSafe is another tool that we have available to us that deals specifically with digital citizenship and responsible usage of technology in the classroom iSafe has complete lessons, uh, resources, content, activities for students to do, all geared towards e-safety and responsible usage of technology. So if you have students in your class that are struggling with making uh, appropriate decisions using their school laptops, or if this is just something that you feel as though your students could benefit from, maybe you teach freshmen, or maybe you just you know have students that you feel are struggling in this area you can um, log into iSafe and access these lessons that are complete with objectives and activities and assessments if you are interested in account for this just send Kate an email student accounts are not necessarily required just teacher accounts and that can be taken care of Inspire is the software that is on all teacher laptops and that's the software that works in conjunction with your Prometheum board. So if you want to use this all you have to do is go to your start menu and you can access Active Inspire. Um, and Active Inspire again is what allows you to create flip charts, it what, it's what allows you to um, draw on your Prometheum board, erase from your Prometheum board, but there's a lot of other features of Active Inspire that we're going to take a look at as the year goes on. You can have a countdown or a count up clock. You can have the ticker going across your screen if you ever wanted to display your objective. Um, Active Inspire, using Active Inspire, you can actually record your lessons. Um, there's so many different things that you can do. You can create graphic organizers. So this is available on all teacher laptops and can be accessed from your start menu. And it's a really great way to make your Promethean board more dynamic. EduCreations is a lesson creation tool. 
And so what it does is it basically turns your computer screen into a whiteboard or into a Promethean board and allows you to create and record lessons. It also allows your students to do this. So on their computers, they can actually create lessons, um, have a voiceover, explain the lesson, and then the information or the resources can be shared online. So this is a really great tool for flipping your classroom or for making lessons available to students outside of class. You can use EduCreations to create a little quick lesson that you post to Edmodo. But students can also create a lesson. Um, if they're students that are excelling in class, you can challenge them to create a little lesson to help explain a concept to their peers. Or you can use it as an assessment tool to see how well um, they know certain content and what kind of understanding they have of things. So it's a really great tool for both teachers and students and uh, free accounts are available for this resource. Inspiration is a tool that teachers have had on their computers for quite a few years now. Um, it is still available on all teacher laptops. Unfortunately, students used to have access to the tool and they no longer have access to it, but it doesn't mean that it's not still a really useful tool to use in class. So again, if you go to your start menu, you can pull up Inspiration 8 on your laptop. And this is a really great way of creating mind maps, concept maps, graphic organizers in order to organize and share information. So this is a really good alternative to standard notes maybe that you'd have on a PowerPoint presentation. You can actually create a graphic organizer or a mind map with the lesson's notes. You can also create fill-in-the-blank graphic organizers or fill-in notes using this. And it's really helpful to visual learners who maybe need kind of a, a more graphical layout for their information. But you can create um, a graphic organizer for students to fill in and then distribute it to them for them to fill out. LearnZillion is a resource available to teachers to help support your existing curriculum. So Learn, LearnZillion um, is free for teachers to create accounts and it offers curriculum itself but also lesson resources. So depending on what you're teaching, you can go on and access lessons that are ready to go with lesson plans and activities and things like that, but you can also access uh, different elements to support your existing curriculum, a video to go along with a particular topic, uh, an article, an activity. So there's a ton of standards aligned lessons and videos that have already been created that exist that you can incorporate either complete lessons into what you're teaching or just different acti activities or elements into your existing lessons. Screencast-O-Matic is a really cool to tool for teachers to use in class. Screencast-O-Matic allows you to take screen recordings um, it also allows you to incorporate your webcam if you want to for your students. Um, but what's great about it is it's great for creating tutorials, for giving your students some information, for going through step-by-step -step instructions. So for students you have that are visual learners, you can walk them through the process of how to do something, you can demonstrate how to do something. It's a really great way to model. It's also really good if you know you're going to be out of class one day, if you're looking to flip your classroom. Screencast-O-Matic is um, a great way to create um, video tutorials, video resources for your students to use in class.